are you having trouble with your business growing and being able to get the best out of your team and also not to be as reliant on you? I've found over the years that to be able to get a business really operating so it's not totally reliant on you, so it doesn't take up all your time, but more importantly, you've got consistent practice within the business. So it's very important to look at ways to look at better management. And I've come up with 25 tips on ways to manage your business better. Now, today I'll just talk about three of those today to start it off, I'll let you know what sort of things you can do, but the rest are really important too. So I recommend after you've heard this too, you download some information or contact me. I'm really happy to go through and discuss it with you. I'm also preparing an ebook too that will have detail those 25 tips. So get in touch and I'm sure it'll help. Now what I've found is, you know, one of the most important things is to look at what your core purpose is. In business, what are you there for? What's your unique selling point? What makes you stand out from the crowd? So it's important you actually establish that and it's well known and accepted by all your team members, but also the people you're trying to draw in as, as new clients or businesses because they need to know what's different about you, why they should be working with you and not one of your competitors. So that's part of your management to get that right too. Then, of course, you've got to set some really strong goals with the business. And of course, I've got to follow the principle of being smart goals. And those smart goals, you know, starting off with they must be specific. And that means be clear about what the goal is. Don't be vague. They've got to be measurable. If you can't measure something, you can't see how it's performing and you can't improve or manage it. It's also going to be achievable goals. Don't set unrealistic goals. The goal is going to be something you can achieve in the next 90 days, next year, might even be longer term, but at least you have a process towards achieving those goals. And then it's really important to make sure they're relevant. You've got to be relevant to your business. There's no point thinking of something that's not going to help you increase sales or make the business grow or develop or become more valuable. And of course, set a time. You know, make sure you set in place how long those goals should last, when you should be achieving them by, so you can once again have something to aim at. I know when I was running um, Compassby Country House, started off a very small business that I bought that only had five full-time staff members. But they'd been used to working in a very different manner. And as I came in, got involved and started to really grow the business quite rapidly, in fact, by our second year, we won a major business award. But in doing that, I had to set up whole new systems and look at ways to manage. One of the most important parts was communication with the team. I made sure we had regular meetings and regular information so we're on the same page. And that way I wanted their input also. So that it wasn't just about what I was trying to create. I wanted to create this business as a team. I wanted them we could all grow together. We did. And you know, within a very short time I had 35 full-time team members there and in a whole range of different roles, of course. And but it was so important that we we're on the same page and the culture was established. So that's where the proper management techniques can come into play and make a really big difference. So don't be caught up without those systems. Yes, it sounds like extra work, but otherwise it's relying too much on yourself or the business is inconsistent. If you're not there, it's not done your way. And if you don't have systems that so people know what to do, even though really good people will create their own thinking they're doing the right thing but may not reflect your core purpose or your core business that you want to achieve for the long term. So if you can look at getting the right management in place, and as it grows over time, it may just start with a, a, a simple checklist. But that checklist, as it grows and develops, becomes actually a user manual with the whole business. It also then makes your business far more saleable in the future because it's not reliant on you. You've got systems in place, you've got team members in place that could grow the business. After a number of years of running Capacity House, we got a great offer and we sold it to an international company. Now, I remember going back the week after we'd sold it and the new manager there said, look, this last weekend went like clockwork. Everything just happened. You know, I just, I don't have to do anything because everyone seemed to know their role, the business worked well, so the systems were in place, so that's a credit to you in, in developing that. It wasn't me, it was my team that developed that. As a group, we worked together. So if you'd like to know more about this, 
please get in contact with me. Check out my website where there's more information. As I mentioned earlier, I'm actually preparing an ebook on these 25 management tips to really help you manage and grow your business. Thanks for listening. Thank you.